Uh, we're going now to Alice Porter. Alice this morning has been bringing us around Dagenham and asking people in uh, what issues are affecting them. Alice, we just finished with uh, the, the Daily Mail um, associate editor, Andrew Pierce there, and that is actually the housing state where, where he was reared. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow, here on the Beckentree Estate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small world. That's incredible, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's absolutely enormous. It spans about four miles. So, yeah, it's been fascinating going around and meeting so many of the people that live here. There's 27,000 homes here. It's absolutely enormous, and it's been fantastic being out and about and meeting some of the brilliant people here. I've just come to Ballard's Road, and there's somebody here who I think is going to be really interesting to talk to about the sad news that we're seeing that's been coming out of Ukraine. So, hopefully... We can have a bit of a chat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're live on GB News with Eamon Holmes and Isabel Webster. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm Ray Deskins, a Church of England priest in Dagenham. Lovely. Can I come in? Is oh, that all please. right? Thank you so much. Hello there. Good morning. Hi there. I'm Alice. Hello. Hello. And you're Helen. And so you are married to Ray and you're also involved with the church in the area. Is that right? Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you so much. Can I just come yeah, through? Sure thank you. Oh, a cup of tea. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. That, that is a great book selection, Ray. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. My goodness me. And then these all lovely family pictures over here. That is, yes. That's lovely. How many children have you got and grandchildren? Three daughters and eight grandchildren. Oh, fantastic. Oh, Helen, thank you so much. Lovely. I'm sure I'm going to plonk myself here if that's okay. Certainly. Thank you so much. Now, we were just um, hearing just now, we were just sort of hearing some very sort of sad news, really, that's coming out of Ukraine. We've had figures come in um, just this morning from the Ukrainian president saying about deaths from Ukrainians, but also from Russians as well. I mean, it's obviously such a desperate situation as for someone who's a, a, a reverend and both of you working in the church, in the sort of community. I mean, how are people sort of reacting, really, in your congregation to, to what's taking place? I think they're reacting with horror. It's a desperately sad situation that war has been unleashed in such an evil way um, so suddenly on a civilian population. Um, it's unthinkable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've also been hearing that EU member states, they're going to be sending arms to Ukraine. It's quite a sort of unprecedented. I mean, you know, you know, as two people who are sort of both religious, I mean, where does that sort of, what do you sort of think about that? I mean, on the one hand, you know, some people may feel it's right to give them arms, but of course, you know, war can be such a terrible thing. I mean, what do you think, Helen? Well, I mean, I think if they send arms, it could be a quick fix, but wars breed more wars. And so... It's not a real solution, and the real solution to a problem is people talking, people getting to know each other, as happened at the end of the Second War, when within Europe, nations started working together, and so we've had so many decades of peace, because they may argue, but it's words, not bombs. And what about in your um, congregation? Have you got Ukrainians? Cause, I mean, obviously, you know, you, I know you've lived, you were born on the Beckentree estate. I mean, it's now it's quite a multicultural sort of area now. I mean, are you, have you got many Ukrainians in your congregation? Um, actually, it's a delight to see the real variety we have in Dagenham. Um, we have got um, a Ukrainian member of one of our churches and other Ukrainians have visited from time to time. So, yes, we do uh, uh, value and... Um, re rejoice in the fellowship with Ukrainian members and, of course, Russian members. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, have you got sort of, I mean, it's a difficult situation at the moment. And we were saying earlier, I mean, we have to sort of separate the Russian government from the Russian people. Yeah. And, and how does that, what sort of challenge do you have in terms of your con congregation in regards to that? How, how are they feeling? Um, well, obviously, everyone's facing the situation with fear and trepidation. Mm. Um, for um, those with family in the Ukraine, program. It's a particularly fearful time, mm -hmm. and uh, they're wondering how they will keep, how their family will be kept safe, how they can be possibly rescued from a dramatic situation. And uh, at this present moment in time, we've just newly arrived at this position, so we don't know what the solution is yet. And I know you were saying to me earlier, you've actually got one member of your congregation who's half Ukrainian and, and half Russian, and it just, I suppose, in, in some ways, that sort of sums up the complexity of this situation, doesn't it? It certainly does. There, there's. No easy split. As you said, um, it's not a question of the Ukrainian people attacking the, um, the 
Ukrainian people being attacked by the Russian people. Uh, the, uh, these are two communities whom we must love and care for and value. But it looks as if the war has been unleashed in an immoral way. And now we've got to respond to this particular situation. Well, Ray and Helen, thank you so much for letting me into your home and for the cup of tea. Hugely appreciated. I mean, obviously, such a horrendous ongoing situation in Ukraine. And it's just so important speaking to people who are out there, speaking to people and working with those in the community who are, of course, immensely affected by it all.